Uh, we were first told about this problem with the flamingos around about three and a half weeks ago. Uh, during that period of time, a number of birds have died. In fact, in the last two days, another 22 birds have died, even though there have been uh, markings put up along the electrified cable. This leads us to the worrying question as to whether the water has contaminated itself uh, or indeed the birds are suffering from some kind of illness. Kenneth, you've lived on uh, Bonaire for many, many years. Is, has this water always been here? Uh, yes. There are two of those ponds here. One, there's one further up uh -huh. in the, on the countryside. They were always here, but only filled during rainy season. Rainy season. After that, they were dry. Right. But I never saw them filled this far up. Right. Now you know, know a little bit about flamingos, you've been around them most of your life. I noticed that there's one or two that show signs of uh, almost a greyness. Now that can be common of course with them being young, but they're obviously not young birds. There were three here in the beginning. Uh -huh. What would that suggest to you, Kenneth? Uh, that might indicate that their nutrition is not proper. Right. Because on proper nutrition, they got that orange color. Okay. And they grow older, and like those that we saw here, gray. Yes. That is an indication to me that they have not uh, been uh, fed properly. Right. They right. don't get the proper nutrition, nutrition that they... anymore right. that they need. Right. That can be caused by contaminated water. Uh -huh. 22 birds, that's what you've been told uh, over the last two days. Two days. That's a lot. Um, that's, that's more, and, and as you can see now, we already have the markings on the wire. Uh, they've been there for some time. That sort of tells us that it's not the wire we should be looking at. Uh, we should be looking else. at other things as well. Yes, we need to look for uh, the source, the real, the real source. Real source, right. Yeah. There was a public outcry when over 30 birds were found dead. Consequently, we came out to look for the carcasses of some of those birds so we could do some research. We did that based on the presumption that with so many birds dying, there had to be other factors than just the overhead cables. We're now, I would say, midway through our, through our work in trying to establish exactly what's caused the death of these birds. We're now taking water samples to eliminate that as part of the cause. Uh, and uh, we have blood samples which have been taken uh, here on the island and they will be uh, forwarded to the relative laboratories so that we can see if there's any kind of virus in the blood of those animals that are dead. Um, it's now the 20th of April and um, in the last two days we've had 22 birds die. Uh, unfortunately, with the lack of information as to the exact location of where they were, those carcasses were found, it's very difficult for us to establish once again the exact cause because uh, unfortunately the electricity company, the web here, have only provided such a short area of cable with marking. And that's presuming then of course that the birds only use this little area here to get to their feeding ground uh, in the lake over to this side of me. Um, we're not doing enough and we're not doing it fast enough. Uh, and we need help here if we're going to actually save this, what is in fact the uh, national bird of Bonaire. This is what we've got on an island that prides itself on its biodiversity. We're actually less than say 300 meters from the area which was marked by the electric company by the web here on Bonaire. Here there are no markings whatsoever and around us approximately six birds. We didn't start looking yet um, because there are undoubtedly more. Uh, if this isn't an obvious crisis by now then I'd really like to know what is. Uh, this is a crying shame especially for an island that prides itself on its biodiversity. <clears throat> it's not just my opinion, but other people who are working with the government, working around the government, are also aware of this. And we're all very much aware that not enough is being done. This is an absolute tragedy. This is where we get our money from. 
the tourist dollars that are so important to us, so they tell us, will all fade away if we end up looking at dead birds and dying reefs. We've looked at less than half a kilometre of road and with the birds we were told about before we came out, we're now looking at around about 120 uh, pink flamingos. Uh, this one, probably quite a recent kill, I'd say, in the last 48 hours, um, shows to be quite healthy. That's to say he's not suffering from malnutrition. His legs still show a nice colour of red uh, and there's no obvious signs that the bird was sick. That puts us back to the original theory, which is these wires. And if it takes another 120 birds for the web to do something about this, then I really will be ashamed of the island and the company. This is, um, it, it's not so much of a, a disgrace, it's a travesty uh, for the wildlife on this, on this island. And it's also a clear indication of how long we have to wait before we do something. It was the same with the groundwater pollution. It's been the same with the reefs. Everything is about being quiet and keeping the tourists happy. Well, put this one in your tourist book. So I suppose as the crow flies, we're now approximately a kilometre away from the original little selenia where we were doing the very first water samples. Just as a matter of interest, as we were finding the dead birds, we noticed that in this area, even though there's sufficient water for the birds, and this pink coloration is exactly what the, what the flamingos are feeding on that gives them that lovely pink color. It wasn't there on that side of the road. So you have to ask yourself, why are they not feeding here? And this could certainly be part of the problem uh, that we're looking at. This is the sediment holding tank for the waste from this fish farm. Cargill, of course, have produced salt here for many years. We are not sure uh, what the implications are as to our research with these birds, but I have a very strong feeling that we shouldn't be ignoring it. And why there are no birds here when there are birds in all of the other selenias is a big question mark that perhaps is quite obvious.